Welcome to ISM 420, Data Modeling and Warehousing. This first video should be a review because the prerequisite for this class is WIS 210 or ISM 410. So if it's been a while since you took the ISM 410 or WIS 210 course, this video will go over some of the basic terminology. So a database is a collection of interrelated tables. So everything in the database should be on a related subject. And every table in a database has to have a unique name. Also, every table in the database has to be related to at least one of the other tables. A table in a database is like a spreadsheet except within each cell there can only be one data value. So for instance, we can't cram two phone numbers into a single cell. And unlike a database, a cell is not going to contain a formula. Every column in a database has to have a unique name, and every row in a database has to have a unique identifier. The unique table name, the unique column name, and the unique row identifier is how the computer locates each piece of data in the database. Now one of the things that I should have pointed out is you can download the slides associated with this video so that you can take notes on the slides as we go along. So here's an example of two tables that might be within a database. One is an employee table and each row is uniquely identified by an employee ID. The other table is a high school table, and each row is identified by a school ID. The tables are related because every employee in the table has graduated from a high school in the high school table. So in order to relate two tables together, they have to have a column in one table that can match to the primary key in another table. So in this case, because each employee graduates from only one high school, we put the high school ID in the employee table and it matches to the school ID in the high school table. Now we're, we're trying to match two tables together one of those tables has to have a foreign key and that's the attribute that matches to the primary key in the second table. And because one of those tables has to have a foreign key, we need to decide whether we put the employee ID in the high school table or whether we put the school ID in the employee table. And we can decide this initially by trial and error. If we try to put the employee ID in the high school table, the problem is going to be we have multiple employees who have graduated from the same high school. So that's not going to work. So let's try the reverse. Let's try putting the school ID in the employee table. And even though an employee might have attended more than one high school, our definition of high school in the employee table is the school that they graduated from and though there will only be one of those. So that works. So high school is the foreign key in the employee table to match the employee to the high school they graduated from. Okay, so all of you have taken the, the ISM 410 or WIS 210 course, so you know how to build databases. So the question might be, why do I need to know data modeling? I already know how to build databases. Well, let me give you an example that's an architectural example. If you're going to build a tool shed like this, if that's your database, you don't need to do a lot of data modeling. You can just pull out some instructions and start building the tool shed or the database. You also don't need to be a construction professional to build a tool shed. But since we're going to be IT professionals, we're not just going to build tool sheds. We're going to build 
structures that are the equivalent of this. And if we're going to try to build something complicated like this, the database equivalent of this particular home, we need more sophisticated tools than we would need to just build a tool shed. And those are going to be our data models. Now in systems work, data models are very similar to architectural models. If you've taken one of the systems analysis and design courses, you know that there are different types of models for different purposes, just like the architect has different types of models for different purposes. Models can also be at different levels of detail. And within data modeling, we can create a data model that's at the conceptual level of detail at the logical level of detail or at the physical level of detail. In this particular course, we're going to take the middle approach. The logical data model is what we're going to concentrate on for this particular course. So when we talk about the design of systems or databases, we're going to use models for the same reason that the architect does. To diagram complicated things before we start to build them. For databases, the types of data models that we're going to use are called entity relationship models. And for data warehouses, we're going to use dimensional data models. Now let's talk for a minute about the difference between transactional databases and data warehouses. In transactional databases, the data is going to be current up to the minute. It's going to be created by transactions like keying in the data or automatic input like reading an easy pass uh, uh, device. There's going to be a large number of users. We want really fast response time. Typically, there are going to be a limited number of queries and a large number of standard fixed format reports. And the data that is updated in the transactional database is stored only once in the database. This is really important because if the data is going to be updated, we want to make sure it's only stored in one place so that we only have one place to update when the data changes. A data warehouse is a little bit different. It's not necessarily going to have current up to the minute data, but it is going to have historical data for the past several years. Data warehouses are frequently consolidated from several different transactional systems. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, typically, they're going to have a smaller number of users than transactional databases. Typically, the managers or analysts are going to be the primary users for a data warehouse. Sometimes the queries are complicated, so it might be a little bit slower than a transactional system. The queries are typically ad hoc rather than standardized pre-formatted reports. We'll see when we design data warehouses that sometimes we'll duplicate some of the data on purpose in the data warehouse to make the queries easier. And another aspect of data warehouses is because the volume of historical data can be quite large, the data warehouses can be huge. We're going to use two different types of modeling. Entity relationship modeling will be used for transactional databases, and dimensional data modeling will be used for data warehouses. So this is a diagram that shows the relationship between transactional databases and data warehouses. On the left here are the transactional databases, and this might be four different systems where we consolidate the data from these individual databases into a database. So a data warehouse is a database uh, within the data warehouse. And we might have multiple databases within the data warehouse that might have different levels of consolidated detail 
or summarized data. We might also do an extract from the data warehouse to create a subset for a data mart, or we might archive some of the historical data that's not used very frequently. So by way of review, a little bit more review of the terminology. The columns in a database table are called attributes. One of the columns, or a combination of columns, needs to be identified as the primary key. The rows in a database table are sometimes called tuples. An entity is a person, place, or thing, and when we're done in our data modeling, our physical entities are going to become our database tables. The foreign key is a column that matches one table to another table by matching the foreign key column to the primary key in another table. And the terminology domain, when we're talking about databases, means the universe of valid values. For instance, the domain for a phone number in the US is a 10-digit number. So here are our two tables, employee table and high school table, with the primary keys, attributes, and foreign keys identified. By way of review, here is a list of the data types available for each of the attributes in each of the tables. Normalization is an important principle in database design. Normalization is a process by which we eliminate redundancies in the database. As I mentioned before, in our transactional databases, each individual piece of data, each attribute, should be stored in only one table unless that attribute happens to be a foreign key that's going to match to the primary key in another table. Another principle when we're designing our databases is that a single attribute should not have compound values. So for instance, a person's first name, middle name, a last name should all be separate attributes, not a single compound attribute called names. And a third uh, principle is if we can eliminate redundant data, it's a good idea. So we might have a business address and a home address, and those are two different attributes, but they might contain the same values. So if there's a way we can reorganize it so that those values aren't stored in two different attributes, that's a good idea to do. So on this slide, I show some pieces of data that might be compound attributes. And let's just talk briefly about whether they should be one attribute or multiples. So in the first case, the John Q. Doe Jr., that should probably be four different attributes, first name, middle initial, last name, and suffix. The second one, street, is frequently listed as one attribute. However, I have used databases like voter registration databases where it's really convenient if you're assigning someone all of the people who live on Main Street to separate the number from the rest of the address. But that's unusual. Normally, street would be one attribute. Uh, likewise, for favorite band, J. Giles band would typically be one attribute. Uh, but for degree, we would probably separate the Bachelor of Science from the type of degree and make chemistry a separate attribute. So how we use the data becomes important. The university, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, would probably be one attribute. The position of systems analyst might be one attribute, or it might be two. If we had types of analysts, like financial analysts, business analysts, we might want to make systems analysts two 
types of attributes. So we need to understand how the data is being used to identify the attributes.